What's going on guys, Brent 31 appreciate you guys tuning in. So this video is gonna be exclusively for those that are interested in the One Shepherd Leadership Institute or those that are about to attend their very first training semester and they just need some guidance on what they need to take to that semester. This is not gonna be an in-depth video to where this is every single little piece of minute gear that you need to bring to the field. No, this video right here is gonna be showing you newcomers what exactly you need at least to get by for your first semester. Understand that the One Shepherd Leadership Institute is not just a single little training class that you go to. No, this is, think of this as more of a college, a, uh, a college of semesters, training semesters. Not every training semester is the same. They have the basic fundamental uh, layout, but the curriculum is different every semester um, in a large cycle until you complete your actual warrior and leadership tracks. So, with that being said, guys, this is for an individual that is attending a One Shepherd Leadership Institute for the very first time who just needs some guidance on what they need to bring, okay? So, with that being said, I'm going to be covering uniform requirements and gear requirements. This is something that you have to invest in, okay? I understand that, you know, you know money's always tight for everybody. I've never met a person that money was never an issue, okay? So, I'm going to give this guide to you guys so that you can get through and buy the bare minimum of what you need to get through your very first semester. As you progress through the uh, program, let's say you're very interested in the program, you want to aspire to do bigger and better things in the program, hey, you're definitely going to buy more gear in addition to this along the way. But this, again, is for you newcomers. Alright guys, so starting off with the uniform. So One Shepherd maintains two different types of uniforms. You have the olive drab, olive green uniform that I have on right here. And then you have the M81 Woodland style utility uniform that you see on the uh, the poncho laid out. Yes, you have to have both uniforms. If it's your first semester, you still have to have both uniforms on you, okay? So probably the biggest purchase you're gonna make is the uniforms. That is what you should purchase first, okay? So the big thing with these uniforms is the tops. These have an ACU, Army Combat Uniform cut top. When I say ACU, I'm not referring to the camouflage pattern. That camouflage pattern is actually called Universal Camouflage Pattern, or UCP. ACU is actually referring to the cut of the uniform. So the cut of the uniform is called ACU, Army Combat Uniform. That is the type of top that you need in this olive green as well as M81 Woodland. Make sure you get those. They have Velcro on the uh, shoulders as well as shoulder pockets for our uh, regimental patch as well as these different slant pockets and other features associated with the uniform. Remember, it's a uniform. There's a uniform standard, so we all look alike, okay? This is a military-based oriented uh, leadership school, okay? So there is uniformity. There's not the grooming standards, all right? If you wanna come out there looking like a, a lumberjack with a you know, full Manchu or a beard, hey, by all means, you can show up, but you need to be in our uniform. Again, M81 Woodland, as well as olive uh, green. So the trousers, there's a little bit more leeway. The trousers can either be the uh, ACU cut trousers, like the ones I have on here. They have ankle pockets. They have a, uh, a BDU style um, cargo pocket on the side with like a slant cut, kind of like the old Vietnam uh, jungle fatigues. However, you can wear a variation as long as the colors match. And uh, I caution you when you're looking at, you know, getting all of drab or all of green uniforms, sometimes different companies and, and manufacturers make different colors in this uh they all call it the same thing but they won't match up so make sure your trousers match your top okay but you can use standard bdu style trousers with uniform the important thing is that the top is the acu cut but you can use regular bdu style trousers that don't have the ankle pockets and all that other flair so definitely if you're getting your uh, m81 woodland uniform you can get old surplus bdu trousers and these will be just fine, okay? So that's, that's an area that uh, you can save some money. And a lot of you probably already have BDU style uniforms laying around. Other variations that are acceptable are BDU style variations. Like this is a TrueSpec 24-7 brand. It's, as you can see, it's BDU style, okay? So it has, but it, it has different style pockets. But as you, it, I mean, it's a BDU style and this would be appropriate as well. Your trousers do need to have a name tape on the right cargo pocket. Now, if you show up to your very first semester without name tapes on, 
not a big deal, but by your second semester, you definitely need to have the uh, insignias and stuff on your uniform. So again, you can show up to your first semester with no name tapes or anything like that, but by your second semester, you need to have the insignias, you need to have the name tapes all in the proper place. And that's a name tape on your uh, right breast pocket, above your right breast pocket for your name, and the name is your first initial with a period followed by your last name. So it's a little bit different than the uh, military. And then the left, the left side, the left breast pocket is gonna be your one shepherd name tape. On the right cargo pocket is gonna be a name tape for, on your trousers, okay? Headgear for students is gonna be your standard boonie covers. Yes, you gotta have both, olive drab as well as woodland camouflage. And these don't have to be military issue guys, there's plenty of companies out there that make boonie covers in these respective uh, colors. But make sure again that they match, that the boonie matches your uniform. Okay, this one's made by Proper and this one's made by True Spec. Both are uh, appropriate, match your respective uniform, and this is what you need as a student to attend the One Shepherd Leadership Institute to complete your, uh, your headgear. So Army style patrol caps or eight point covers like the one I'm wearing are not to be worn by students. Those are only for instructor cadre. So you're gonna see Army style patrol caps in either a green or black configuration uh, going around at the training semester. Those are only cadre. If you see uh, an A-point cover like the one I have in either green or black, that is a, an instructor cadre that has a background as either a Marine or in the Navy. But you as a student do not need a patrol cap or an A-point cover regardless of your background. Your standard headwear is the boonie cover. Now what do you need as far as footwear at the One Shepherd Leadership Institute? Well you only need one set of boots, all right, and that's Coyote Combat Boots. They can be any make or manufacturer as long as they're you know, tactical in nature and they're in the coyote uh, color. They can be worn with both your olive green uniform as well as your woodland camouflage uh, uniform. But they gotta be coyote. Now, Marine Corps uh, surplus boots, like the ones I have on, these uh, Marine Corps issue jungle boots, these, that is the uh, perfect color. So you can wear any type of Marine Corps issued standardized boot will, will work. And here's another example. These are uh, rugged all-terrain aka rat boots. They have a Vibram sole. These are uh, very good and recommended boots for the One Shepherd Leadership Institute. I know a lot of guys run these. Um, you can also look at getting, these are current issue Army jungle boots. And ever since they adopted the uh, OCP camouflage pattern, they made their boots coyote and they're no longer the very bright desert tan that they used to have. Now you can still get a boot like this in this color, this really bright uh, desert tan color. You guys can see the difference there, but you gotta, you have to uh, dye these with a brown to get them to that coyote level. So, you know, you can probably save a lot of money by getting a, a desert tan boot, but you're definitely gonna have to dye it so that it matches the, uh, the coyote boots, okay? Because these are definitely too bright to uh, be acceptable with the uniform. If you show up to your first semester and you got something like this on your feet, you know, it is what it is, guys. We give a lot of leeway, leeway on your first semester, but definitely if you're gonna go be going through the One Shepherd Leadership Institute uh, warrior track and leadership tracks, you gotta conform to the uniform standards, and that is a coyote colored boot, okay? So the belt that you wear in your trousers needs to be olive green. It can be a regular uh, BDU style uh, utility belt, or it can be a regular belt regardless. Just make sure it's olive green. Your skivvy shirt needs to be a plain Jane or one shepherd skivvy shirt, just like this. This is a standard issue Marine Corps um, skivvy shirt made by Sophie. You guys, these are very available, guys. You can get like packs of three for uh, 12, 15 bucks, you know, depending at where you look, okay? So these are very available. Get these, probably can even get uh, a standard olive drab, olive green um, skivvy shirt at Walmart or something like that. But I recommend just get a Marine Corps issue skivvy shirt and it'll be just fine. Socks need to be OD socks. So just go to a surplus store or go on eBay or something and uh, you can pick up military boot socks, cushion sole in an olive drab or olive green color and that's what we wear. Skivvies, no requirement on skivvies. This is just my personal advice. Get uh, silkies, Marine Corps issue silkies. Well, actually, the Marine Corps don't even issue them anymore, but they still sell them, all right? Made by Sophie, and uh, silkies will improve and enhance combat effectiveness by 10%. They're scientifically proven and validated. So make sure you get some silkies, okay? And uh, these are just great pieces of underwear, guys. I've worn these my whole Marine Corps career. 
which is about 20 years now. And uh, just silkies have always been my preferred um, method of undergarment, okay? You will be in a troop tent, whether you're male, female, or self-identify as an Amazonian indigenous midget. You will live in the same quarters all together in a troop tent when we're at the FOB, okay? Or if you're in the field. So if you have to drop trowel, you know, you want to have something like this underneath your trousers. Um, you know, for you guys that go commando out there, it is what it is. <laughs> but uh, if you got to forge a river or something, I just, I think silkies are just a, a quick drying, great piece of uh, undergarment for operations in the, uh, the field. Um, that wraps up undergarments. Let's move on. Talking about rain gear. You have two different options. You can either get a parka or you can get a poncho, but you got to have one or the other and you got to have both colors, olive drab or olive green and M81 woodland, okay? So some good options for you. There are a lot of surplus M81 woodland uh, Gore-Tex tops out there and they're very good prices, guys. Get them while you can. They're not going to be cheap forever. Uh, but there's definitely a surplus of M81 Woodland um, Gore-Tex tops out there for good prices. Get them online, get them on eBay, get them at surplus stores. They're out there. They're relatively cheap compared to their uh, civilian counterparts. You can get uh, an OD one. Okay, this particular one's Canadian. This is Canadian surplus. Found it on eBay. It was a steal. I think I paid $20 for it, but that was four years ago. Who knows what prices are. There's definitely olive drab, olive green, uh, Gore-Tex style tops out there that you can pick up. Prices may vary on those because these uh, are not surplus items for the most part. This one is, but this is Canadian and I'm not sure um, what these are going for nowadays. But as long as it's a uh, M81 Woodland or OD, you're good to go, okay? Now, if you don't wanna get a Gore-Tex top, you gotta get a poncho, okay? And yes, you gotta have both colors. So get a woodland poncho or an olive drab poncho. Now you can get an old Vietnam poncho, but those are gonna be very expensive, okay? This is an M81 woodland surplus poncho. These are relatively cheap. Get them at surplus stores, on eBay, what have you. If you're gonna get a OD or olive green poncho, I recommend that you get uh, an old West German poncho. These go for, I think about $15, $20, depending on where you look and shop, okay? But these are solid ponchos, a little bit heavier than a USGI poncho, but they'll get the job done. And these are a lot cheaper. You try to find something like an olive drab or olive green Vietnam era poncho, it's gonna be priced through the roof, okay? Because that's a collector's item nowadays. That is not gonna be the way to go. <laughs> you are not gonna be happy. All right, not to mention ponchos break down over time, uh, we, what they're treated with, so they might be smelly and, and not be as good as, uh, you know, like a Gore-Tex top. So make sure you're getting something that's serviceable and uh, you're getting it for a good price. But again, you gotta have either a Gore-Tex or some sort of waterproof parka in either Woodland or OD, or get a poncho. Or you can get both, but you gotta have one or the other. All right guys, so let's talk about snivel gear. Now, none of this that I'm about to point out to you is required, okay? This is all just recommendation stuff, but it's stuff that uh, I think you need to have depending on which company you're going to as well as which semester you're going to, okay? So if you show up with just you know your, your, your utility uniform in the fall semester at Bravo Company, you might be hurting a little bit, <laughs> all right? So this stuff right here is not a uniform requirement, but it's definitely something I recommend uh, as a you need, you need to have it, okay? So again, if you go West Virginia during the fall, man, it could get down um, maybe in the 30s. There was like borderline snow on the ground one semester when I went up there early in the morning. It, it got really cold and wet. So uh, you definitely needed something a little more than just your Gore-Tex as well as uh, you know your utility. So um, this stuff right here, this is, uh, you know, an undergarment helps wick that moisture away off your body. You know, polypros, these are standard issue uh, Marine Corps right here. And, uh, you know, something like this will help wick that moisture and pull it away from your body in that cold weather. So you wear these underneath your standard utilities, and then over that would be your uh, your Gore-Tex top and bottom or your, uh, your poncho or whatnot. 
okay? Underneath your utility blouse, but over your, you know, PolyPro top would be something like this, like a, a waffle top or, you know, a, a fleece. This is the grid, standard issue Marine Corps grid fleece, uh, but there's definitely surplus fleeces out there. You can pick one up. You don't have to get this stuff, guys. There's, there's other variants. This is just a recommendation for you. So, if again, if you're going Bravo Company during the uh, fall time, you're definitely going to want at least all of this right here. If you're going Alpha Company during the fall, you're definitely going to want at least just your uh, grid fleece. You're definitely not going to probably need any uh, of the polypro tops and bottoms, but a, a some sort of fleece to put underneath your utilities in either company during the fall time is uh, a very strong recommendation from me, okay? Uh, as far as snivel gear is concerned, there's a Gore-Tex, or excuse me, not Gore-Tex, but a neck gaiter, as well as a uh, watch cap are definitely good uh, additions. And then you can also think about, you know, um, some glove liners if you're going Bravo Company during the fall, okay? It, it does it does get pretty uh, cold over there during that particular semester. So, um, watch cap, neck gaiter, grid fleece, and poly, poly pro top and bottom um, are just, you know, some, some cold weather considerations if you're going to Bravo Company in the fall. And then if you're going to Alpha Company during the fall, you know, no less than a fleece. And then you're probably going to want at least a watch cap with you, okay? And that gator might not be a bad idea as well. As far as gloves are concerned, you can either wear coyote gloves or olive green gloves. If you show up with black gloves, nobody's going to, you know, bat an eye at you. But the, uh, the uniform packing list does say either coyote or uh, an olive green or olive drab color glove. These are Nomex flight gloves. These have been used by grunts for generations now. That's uh, typically what I use. Uh, I just like the dexterity in the, uh, the gloves. They're just tried and true uh, proven gloves. So that's typically what I use when I go to One Shepherd training semesters. But a lot of guys do like uh, mechanic style gloves and uh, you know reinforced gloves such as this. They, you know, give you a little bit more extra protection on your hands. But here's an idea to give you what you should pick up for gloves. All right, guys, let's talk about sleeping systems. So, standard issue uh, three bag system. However, I don't think it's necessary that you get the black bag. We're not going to be in temperatures to the point to where you need the black bag, okay? So, it comes with a, uh, a Gore Tex top. Now, you can get other sleeping systems, it doesn't matter. This is the one I recommend you get, though, and this is the one that's on the surplus market and I think will probably be the best uh, bang for your buck, okay? But this is a Gore-Tex outer bivy uh, layer, so definitely we're out in the field, you're sleeping, it starts raining, you're going to want some sort of Gore-Tex liner to keep your uh, your bag dry, okay? Especially if the temperatures really drop. You're going to be very miserable if it's cold and wet. Uh, but regardless, a Gore-Tex uh, bivy is a good option, all right? These surplus ones, you can get them while you can at a, a decent prices. Uh, definitely compared to their civilian equivalents. The green bag is like the intermediate uh, patrol bag for uh, intermediate temperatures. However, guys, I find that a bivy sack with a green bag and a poncho liner that I'm gonna talk about here in a minute is more than enough to handle just about everything you're gonna encounter, okay? Especially at the One Shepherd Leadership Institute, because we don't train in the extreme cold weathers. At least they haven't had a winter semester in a long time. So uh, definitely for the stuff that you're gonna be doing at One Shepherd, this will suffice. Green bag with a bivy sack. So that's what I recommend that you get if you're going with the uh, surplus option. Okay, poncho liner, okay? Army dogs call this a whoopee, but I'm a Marine, so I'm gonna call it a poncho liner. So that's what we call it. So poncho liner. Just a, uh, it's just a, you know, a light blanket. These things are fantastic, okay? You can get by a lot of times with just a poncho, the actual poncho, and a poncho liner, or just taking the bivy sack and sticking the uh, poncho liner inside of that, okay? You can get by a lot of times. It's a nice lightweight option. So I recommend, this isn't required, but I recommend that you get a, uh, a bivy sack, okay? Sleeping system is required, okay? Make sure you get a sleeping system. You're gonna need it, uh, especially uh, at the FOB, okay? So you're Cadillac at the FOB, but when you go to the field, if you wanna pack light, um, bivy sack and you know green bag or bivy sack, poncho liner, or if it's really dropping cold and you want a Cadillac some more, 
take all three of these, okay? But that's my uh, recommendation. You also want to get some sort of stuff sack to uh, put this whole bag into, or you can do what I do, just get a, uh, a pack liner like this, stuff it all in there, and then you can push the air out and it gets really tiny and small, okay? Also, another key piece of gear is an isomat. Now this is an old school um, isomat, but you can also get the uh, like the folding accordion style. It's a newer issue. However, these work just fine. And uh, this puts a barrier between your body and the ground to keep that ground from sucking the heat out of your body at night, okay? So you definitely want to get an isomat, regardless whether it's you know old surplus uh, roll-up style like this or uh, the newer accordion style. You should be able to find an isomat at a very good price. All right, guys, next thing I want to talk about that's required is your pack, all right? So you have to show up at your first semester with a pack, and uh, you have a few different options, but there's a wide variety of options out there for you to get. One Shepherd does not have a requirement on color of the pack. It just has to be in a tactical color. So your olive drabs, your coyotes, woodland camouflage, a, any type of you know camouflage pattern, uh, as long as it's a tactical color, tactical scheme, you can wear that pack, okay? And the reason for that is because if we take contact on a patrol or whatnot, your pack's gonna get dropped right away. So we don't have that concern for uh, friendly fire uh, considerations that you have with the uniform and the gear and everything else, okay? So any type of tactical color pack will do. I highly steer towards people, uh, steer people towards uh, getting a surplus pack. They're gonna be your cheapest option in terms of price and quality that you're gonna be able to get. Uh, I have an Alice pack laid out. I also have a more expensive option I'll talk about here in a minute. But I would recommend still, if you were a beginner, I would go with an Alice pack. Now, Alice pack prices have gone up drastically over the last uh, few years. I don't know why, I don't know what's driving that, but they have, okay? But it's still probably gonna be your cheapest option. And I've got videos over the Alice pack if you wanna check those out as well. But inside your Alice pack is a internal pouch here towards the back of the pack that facilitates the carrying of a PRC-77 radio. Now, the PRC-77 radio is the radio we use at One Shepherd, okay? So your, your patrol will be given a PRC-77 and you might be tasked as one of the newer students in carrying that radio, okay? So that PRC-77 fits right there in the back of the pack and then you still have the rest of the pack uh, to put you know other personal items and gear inside that uh, you might carry into the field with you. But I do recommend an Alice pack for new guys. But any surplus pack will do, okay? Uh, whether that's an Ilby or Philby or whatever you, you know your heart desires as long as it's in a tactical color. Now, if you really wanna invest in your pack, okay, which is very understandable, but you're gonna pay a pretty penny, um, I'm gonna steer you towards something like this, Crossfire, okay? These are military-oriented packs made by Crossfire. So they're just like, you know, military, uh, surplus packs, they're designed specifically for infantry operations. All right, so these types of packs are gonna be good for one shepherd usage. But if you go with a crossfire pack, understand that you're gonna be paying uh, two to three times the price that you would a surplus pack, okay? Uh, but you're definitely gonna get what you pay for. This is, uh, this is a definitely a quality pack. And uh, if the coupon code still works, I, I will have a coupon code for uh, crossfire gear down in the uh, pinned comment in the comment section. But I'm, I'm gonna steer you guys as a newcomer to One Shepherd and getting a, uh, a military surplus pack first to try to cut down on that cost, but still retain some of that quality, okay? And just another thing about sur uh, Alice packs is they're very modular, even though they're older, you can add saw pouches to them, you can add e-tools to them, and other accessories like you can see, I've got the skirt and machete pass through on the pocket here. Okay, so they are quality packs despite their age and they can be updated. As you can see, I've added a, a carrying handle and a sternum strap to this Alice pack right here. Regardless of which pack you go with, you need to keep uh, a waterproofing bag or as are commonly referred to as Willie Peter bag inside of it. Now I got two different options here. This is a more modern day Willie Peter bag, and this is the old Alice uh, Day uh, Willie Peter bag, but both work just fine, okay? The cheaper version, as you can see, rubberized inside, all right? The outside is kind of like a, like a, a vinyl almost, but you stuff the contents of the pack inside. It's got a tie off here, so you just fold this up, all right? Fold it over, and then you tie it off 
to secure the bag to keep the contents uh, uh, dry and protected from you know water and rain and if you gotta do like a water crossing or something they'll keep the uh, contents dry but this will also act as a flotation device in your pack in the event that you would have to do a water crossing none of which I think you will do at the uh, one shepherd semester most likely all right never say never though the other option is a, uh, a more modern day one and this is a Marine Corps issue pack um, liner and as you can see the inside is uh, orange and you simply just fold this up okay buckle it off open up the valve and push down and that's going to push all the air out and you can apply as much pressure as you want to it and then once you've got it to the size that you want close off the valve and there you go almost like a, a, <laughs> a vacuum sucked uh, bag there so that really uh, cuts down on the uh, amount of space that your sleeping system or wherever the contents of this would be that goes inside your pack but these old Alice ones work just fine I still use these ones because they're a lot simpler and easier I just throw all my crap in there fold it up tie it up and, and done all right but uh, these are another option as well which will probably cost a little bit more than the older Alice models so next let's talk about field gear now I'm gonna start off by talking about what you absolutely have to have on you as far as uh, going to your very first training semester in terms of field gear okay and then I'll move into some of the stuff that's on the uh, one shepherd packing list that's not necessarily you know 100% required but it is highly encouraged okay but starting off what is required so what's required for your field gear you need the capability of holding at least six magazines on your gear okay so I have an Alice belt and equipment laid out here because in my opinion an Alice belt exemplifies the bare minimum of what you need to attend a training uh, semester and still you guys can get Alice equipment relatively cheap here in the United States okay so uh, what I have laid out here for Alice belt you got the actual belt itself two magazine pouches they can hold three magazines each now do not buy AR-15 magazines okay you are not allowed to bring them on the training facility you will be issued magazines during any training uh, evolution you need to be, have the capability of carrying at least two quarts of water. So what does that look like? That could be two one quart canteens, okay? That could be one two quart that you attach to your belt. That could also be something like a, you know, like a three liter Camelback, okay? But you have to have at least two quarts of uh, water on your uh, uh, battle rattle, your load bearing equipment, okay? You need to have a, a first aid kit. Now, it doesn't have to be a USGI first aid kit. However, you want to have something that at least is able to tend to minor injuries that you may sustain while running around and conducting these training uh, field evolutions, okay? Um, Load-bearing suspenders will help distribute this weight properly on your body and help take some of the load off your waist, okay? So definitely recommend for a first-timer that may, might not have any gear Go with the Alice belt and equipment because it's going to be relatively cheap. And uh, if it's something that you're interested in uh, staying in the program, you can build upon this or you can buy all new stuff later. But I wouldn't go out and blow, you know, hundreds of dollars on gear when you can do something like this to start out your, uh, your training experience. Other required pieces of equipment, note-taking equipment, all right, note-taking gear, uh, notebooks, pens, stuff like that you're gonna be getting periods of instruction you want to write the stuff down I sure as hell can't remember everything that's told to me I got to write stuff down I expect you guys to do it as well okay I don't know why you pay money to go to a training course get information and then you don't retain any of it because you didn't write it down okay you need to have a watch it needs to be either OD coyote or black or something like that if you got an extreme colored watch you can throw it in a watch band like this but you need to have a watch that tells time all right, because you got places to be and places to go, you got to be there on time, okay? So definitely need to have a watch. Um, ballistic eyewear or just eye protection in general, uh, dark color. You can get military-issued ballistic eyewear relatively cheap right now, guys. I've seen this little package right here I got on the Sportsman's Guide for $20. It came with clear lenses as well as the dark lenses, and these are ballistic rated, okay? They were just surplus uh, eye protection that I got off of there. So 
uh, you can find those relatively cheap. Now we're going to move into uh, recommended stuff, okay? So this is not stuff that you necessarily have to have when you go there to, you know, perform your training. You need to have the stuff that I pointed out. However, this is stuff that's highly recommended uh, by individuals that have gone to the course, okay? Um, having a, a decent utility knife, that could be, you know, Ontario Knife Company, it could be K-Bar, something along those lines. You definitely want to have some sort of uh, utility knife. But again, this is just recommended, highly recommended stuff, okay? Uh, a multi-tool, like a Gerber or Leatherman. I'm throwing in a sewing kit, okay? Because if you blow out your crotch, I don't imagine a lot of you are going to come there with extra sets of uniforms, okay? Because it's, it's already expensive to begin with. But if you blow out your crotch or something along those lines, you're definitely going to want to sew it up. So I'm throwing in the recommendation uh, a sewing kit. Um, you can get a small mosquito netting like this. So this goes over your head. The uh, hole right here goes over the top of your boonie. And then the brim of your boonie actually keeps it above your, your head like that, okay? So... Uh, mosquito net, you can throw this over your head at night, you know, keep the mosquitoes from uh, having golden corral on your face while you sleep. Uh, some sort of utility pouch. Now that could be like a dump pouch to add to your belt. Um, definitely something just to add extra items in. That could be a dump pouch. That could be something like on the uh, setup I have here, like a saw pouch. Uh, saw pouch is a great little general purpose pouch and you'll get issued night vision uh, sometimes, depending on the mission and what's available, but they have night vision that they'll issue out. That could be a butt pack, okay? You can get butt packs at a decent price. You can keep your poncho in there, a spare chow, your Gore-Tex top, things like that in a butt pack that will attach to your, your Alice belt, okay? So some sort of utility pouch. Highly recommended. Some tape, whether that's black electrical tape or, uh, you know, like some OD duct tape you definitely want some tape just to tape things up tape up excess of gear excess of straps um, stuff that you're issued it has excess excess of straps or you just need to secure some something down you definitely want some tape just to, to bring along it's a good little general purpose piece of equipment more recommended gear 550 cord um, I, I know the gear list has a, a certain recommended uh, uh, footage but just some extra 550 cord, this stuff comes in handy. You're definitely probably gonna want it for uh, miscellaneous thing. The gear list also has bungee cords as well as a tarp. Now, my opinion is, is if you buy a poncho, you're not gonna need that tarp. Uh, but you can get a tarp. Let's say you don't buy the poncho, you get a Gore-Tex top and you end up buying a tarp. Make sure you have these, uh, these bungee cords to go with it, you know, because you need to string it up. I've also used these bungee cords to help tighten stuff down on my pack. You're going to be issued. You're going to be issued extra gear, guys. You're going to be issued uh, radios, extra batteries, chow, um, mission essential stuff. May, might be um, field phones with reels and wire. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you are going to be given that you're going to have to add to your pack, and you're going to have to find a way to secure it to your pack. Those bungee cords might come into play as well as that 550 cord. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, See this off in the corner. So this is just a radio pouch. This is similar to some of the, the radio pouches that you'll be issued at uh, One Shepherd if you're given one of the squad size radios. As you can see, it's got Alice clips on it. They also have these type of pouches, exact same pouch, but it has uh, like molly webbing on it. But regardless, these things are very compatible, compatible with just regular Alice belts. So again, I think an Alice uh, belt and this type of Alice setup is a good way to go for somebody that's just starting out in the program. Um, another recommended piece of equipment, knee pads, guys. You're gonna be fire team rushing, all right? You're gonna be in the prone, you're gonna get up, conduct a uh, three to five second rush, and then you're gonna be coming down. You might strike your knee on something. Your knees are not gonna last forever, all right? Especially if you get older, okay? I highly recommend you get some knee pads. You can find them relatively cheap. Just get them in the olive green or olive drab color so that they go with the rest of your equipment. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, your gear must be olive green, guys. It must be olive drab, olive green, something in that shade, okay? Because you can wear this gear with both your, your OD uniform as well as your woodland uniform. But you can't do it the other way around. You can't get woodland camouflage equipment 
and wear it with your olive green uniform. Now, the reason I say that, guys, is remember, One Shepherd is a force-on-force um, training institution. So we train with Miles Gear. It's hard enough already to identify friend and foe. You start mixing in like Woodland Utilities with, uh, excuse me, Woodland Gear with Olive Green Utilities, it's gonna make it that much harder to just differentiate who the enemy is and who the good guys are, okay? But it doesn't seem to work that way when you have Olive Green Gear on your Woodland camis. You can still differentiate between Woodland and Olive Green. You know a guy with Woodland is wearing Olive Green Gear. So that's why we recommend, or now, that's why we require olive drab or olive green gear with your uh, for your actual battle rattle. Okay. Another piece of required equipment is a red lens capable flashlight. So make sure it's uh, capable of going to red lens and regular white light. But it definitely needs to be in a tactical color, so uh, a green, a coyote, or black, or something of that nature. But this is a required piece of equipment that you have to have. Another recommended piece of gear are ranger beads. So ranger beads, you're gonna do a lot of land nav out there, okay guys? You might actually be, as a first time student, responsible for keeping the pace. So these are fantastic, you just hang them from your gear, and then each one of these represents 100 meters. So when you travel 100 meters, you move one uh, skull down or one bead down, all right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then on your 10th one represents a thousand meters or one kilometer. So then you move that down, you reset these, and there you go, you start over, okay? Now you go, now you know that you went one kilometer, and then you go again, over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, up, oh, just hit another thousand meters. There we go, now we move two clicks, okay? See how that works? That's why these are good, okay? because you will definitely lose pace, lose your pace count out there in the field moving over rough terrain while still trying to keep your head on a swivel looking for enemy threats. Another strong recommendation from me is to get something like a, uh, something that you can heat up, some water, like coffee or whatnot. I have a BCB little stove here, okay? This goes together. All right. Set up your stove. I got fuel tablets in there. You can use, uh, you know, like the BCB fuel tablets, or you can get the old surplus trioxine tablets, like this. Okay, those go in there. And then you'll have a canteen cup. All right, heat up your canteen cup, heat the water up in there. And hey, you got some hot, hot wet, some coffee or whatever to get you through the uh, the training. Okay, if you're out in the field and whatnot. Okay, I highly recommend that, guys. I need my coffee. I love my coffee. Again, I'm a staff NCO, so <laughs> coffee's kind of a necessity for me when it comes to uh, going into the field. Okay, but uh, that's just a recommended item. Definitely not a required item. You don't have to have that. So another option is you get the uh, USGI stove and this just goes on the ground like this you put your fuel in there you light it and then your canteen cup actually sits on top of this and that's how you heat it up okay and these actually uh go inside your on top of your canteen just like that nice and conveniently so you can buy those stoves canteen cups and uh something like these bcb um, stoves if you want to go this route relatively cheap guys they are not expensive whatsoever and then I just keep my coffee in a you know, bag like this, and then there we go, field expedient coffee. Another piece of recommended but not required gear is an e-tool. Okay, so e-tools, especially the older Alice ones, are still decently priced, all right? And uh, these fold up, keep, keep them in the uh, pouch here, and you can use this as a regular shovel, or you can put it at a 90 degree angle, just tighten this down and use it as a pick, but these are great for digging fighting positions and digging cat holes to take a shit in, all right? Because you don't want to just shit on the ground. All right, this is our training area. We're operating out there and we got to reuse it. So you don't want to be a student later on down the road um, or even in the same semester, stepping in a big pile of shit, all right? So make sure you have an e-tool to uh, dig a cat hole in it. Now, 
I say they're not required uh, as a new student, brand new student, because other people will have e-tools. Not everybody needs to carry an e-tool into the field. You just you need somebody or some, uh, a certain amount of people to carry e-tools so that we do have e-tools, okay? But as a new, brand new student, this is not part of your required gear that you have to show up with, okay? But highly recommend you get one for future, uh, for future use. Also, now I've got a Gurkha machete here. Um, I know some guys carry like pruning shears um, or one of the folding saws, but something to help cut vegetation out of the way to clear fields of fire. Uh, definitely a, a very useful piece of gear. Um, even as a new student coming in, you might have to do that, all right? But not required, but very uh, recommended in my opinion, all right? And it is on the One Shepherd packing gear list. All right, guys, the last thing I wanna mention is bug protection, okay? Go to Walmart, go to Academy Sports and Outdoors, wherever. We get whatever the max is, all right? You want the most deep. Whatever it says on the label that it's gonna give your future children three testicles, that's the stuff you wanna put on your utilities, okay? You wanna keep these bugs off. You're talking West Virginia, you're talking Missouri, all right? There's definitely ticks out there in those environments. You wanna make sure you protect yourself from mosquitoes, ticks, chiggers, all the creepy crawlers. Another thing you can do is get the uh, permethrin. This stuff is fantastic. Same stuff that we used in the US military to treat uniforms, all right? But you can buy it in a box like this and other configurations. And uh, this says it'll treat up to five outf outfits but you just spray down your uniforms, you let them dry, and this stuff will uh, really jack up those insects if they uh, land on you or start crawling up your leg or something, okay? But this is fantastic stuff, okay? Get it, treat your uniforms that you purchase so that you have that protection against the, uh, the creepy crawlers out there. These next four items are pretty much indispensable. Make sure you have some sort of powder for your feet and balls. Uh, I feel like God put Gold Bond on this earth specifically for infantrymen. So make sure you have it. You can probably get the travel size a lot smaller, easier to take to the field. Uh, this right here, self-explanatory, sunblock. You get a sunburn out there, you're gonna meet a bad day. It's gonna affect your uh, training experience. Same is true with chapstick. Make sure you have some moleskin. You know, you start getting hot spots and stuff on your feet. Again, it's gonna ruin your training experience. You will be walking quite a bit, especially with a ruck. And uh, you know, boots aren't the most comfortable thing and uh, eventually they start rubbing. So moleskin will kind of head that off if you start getting some hot spots forming on your feet. All right guys, last thing I'm gonna talk about are uh, some fob accessories. Now these things, again, are recommended, not required, okay? So you can show up without this stuff, but uh, this will definitely make your life a lot easier. Uh, first things first, a green tote type uh, foot locker. Now this thing's plastic. It's one of the like sportsman's uh, chests made by Plano. I think I got this at Academy Sports and Outdoors. They are very reasonably priced. They have locks on uh, just regular lockdowns on the front and sides. And then they have little holes so you can put something like a combo lock on. So it's not exactly uh, Fort Knox secure, but you know, it will do the job of uh, securing your stuff. I've never, in the four years I've gone to One Shepherd, I've never heard about anybody's trying to steal anything. It's all great people that tend to go there. So, uh, but you know, better safe than sorry. Make sure you lock your stuff, right? Um, anyways, diving into this, some other stuff. A laundry bag. I recommend the uh, U.S. military style laundry bag. It's uh, you know, it's made of a regular uh, cloth material, but you stuff your dirty laundry in there. And I think these do a better job, obviously, than the uh, mesh laundry bags of securing those odors from your dirty clothes. If you go to Alpha Company, they do have laundry machines. You don't do laundry every day, but you will get an opportunity about halfway through the training semester to do a load of laundry if you so choose. So I think these are good for uh, keeping your dirty laundry. Um, baby wipes. Now this could go with your field gear just as easy. Baby wipes are great, guys. I mean, <laughs> you have to have baby wipes to get the shit off your ass, all right? Regular shit paper is not gonna get all the shit off your ass. Baby wipes will. If you don't get all the shit off your ass, you're gonna end up with monkey ass and you're not gonna have a great field experience experience at the One Shepherd Leadership Institute, all right? So highly encourage you to take a, uh, a package of baby wipes with you. Um, make sure you get the you know flushable, biodegradable ones and, and whatnot, because you're probably gonna be putting those in a, a cat hole, all right? So moving on, a field stool. Now again, this is for the fob. You probably aren't gonna be humping this into the into the field, 
but uh, it's great to have a field stool so that you can sit in the fob, in, a, in the hooch and whatnot. Just, you know, you're not having to sit on your cot all the time. Uh, field stools are just great pieces of gear. You go to, a, let's say, a class that's actually not inside a hooch. It's out in the, uh, the woods. You can hump the uh, field stool out there and sit on that as well. All right, so just field stool is just a great piece of gear to have uh, in addition. Again, not required. Um, at both Alpha and Bravo Company, there are showers, all right? Now, you're not going to get the shower every day. There's going to be designated days where you get the shower along with the laundry, uh, doing laundry, okay? You don't get to do that stuff every day, but when you do, you want to take advantage of it, all right? Make sure you take shower shoes, soap, and then I highly recommend that you guys get one of those uh, microfiber towels, all right? These are very lightweight. They usually come in tactical colors because the people that buy these things are generally military, okay? So this one's in Coyote. I've seen them in like a uh, desert tan, but get a microfiber towel. They're lightweight, they dry fast, and they're just convenient. Well, that's it guys, that completes this video over the basic gear that you will need as a first time trainee at the One Shepherd Leadership Institute. If you're liking what you're seeing, don't forget to check out my channel, subscribe. I've also got a One Shepherd playlist where I document my time at One Shepherd from essentially the very beginning to now. All right, so make sure you check that out. That will answer every question you've ever had about One Shepherd. I can almost assure you of that. All right, again, I try to give you guys the bare minimum basics and a few recommendations on what to take as a new student to One Shepherd to get you started, right? Get those boots on the ground, get you moving in the program. One little thing I want to throw in there is there are a few uh, complete sets of gear rentals, not uniforms, but gear rentals. Uh, if you're a, new a newcomer to the program, all right, you can reach out to the uh, director at One Shepherd, and he might be able to hook you up with one of those gear rentals, but it's a first-come, first-served basis, all right? So make sure you get on that if that's going to be your course of action. But that is obviously not a long-term uh, solution. But hope you guys found this video useful. If you got any questions about One Shepherd Leadership Institute, feel free to post them in the comment section. I, along with any other cadre that see that, will do our best to answer those questions for you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment.